My name's Corey, one of the senior trainers here at CY Learning. Whether you're new to the industry or a seasoned veteran, it's important that you know how to do financial math. It can help with many industry courses and more importantly, when working with clients. Now, the best way to learn financial math is through practice. So let's roll up our sleeves and get started. Question number one, Troy is investing $100,000 today. Assuming a 5% annual after-tax return, how much would he have saved in 30 years? Well, there are a number of ways that this can be calculated. You can do an individual calculation for every single year, either manually or using a spreadsheet, or you could use an algebraic time value of money formula, or you can use a financial math calculator like the Hewlett Packard 10B, which will do the heavy lifting for you. Let's take a look at each of these methods. We'll start with the individual calculations approach. Have a look at the Excel spreadsheet that you see here. It shows 30 different calculations, one for each year. Let's explore a few of them. If a portfolio grows by 5% annually, at the end of the year, the portfolio value would be 105% of what it was at the beginning of the year. Using this method, it's easy to see that Troy's portfolio would be worth $105,000 after year one, calculated as follows. $100,000 times 105% equals $105,000. In year two, we'd multiply $105,000 again by 105%, which results in a portfolio value of $110,250 by the end of that year. If we use the spreadsheet to do this for every single year and scroll all the way down to year 30, we can see that the portfolio would eventually grow to a value of $432,194.24. Pretty simple, right? But you obviously can't use a spreadsheet during your exam, and doing 30 individual calculations by hand would be a ton of manual work. So this isn't very practical. Another way to tackle this is to use a time value of money formula, which would be much quicker, provided of course you have the formulas memorized and you know which one to use. For example, are you being asked for the future value of a single payment? The future value of a series of payments, which is referred to as an annuity? Or the present value of some future value? As you can probably tell, you'll use a different formula depending on what you're being asked. Just have a look at all these formulas. I'm sure many of you are thinking, please tell me there's an easier way. Well, fortunately there is, so we're not even gonna get into working through the formulas. Let's just jump straight to how you can use a financial math calculator to tackle the question. Now, my personal favorite calculator to use is the Hewlett Packard 10B, so that's the one we're going to focus on. And no, I'm not getting paid for this endorsement. But even if you have a different financial math calculator, you'll still find this lesson very helpful because the fundamentals are the same regardless of which calculator you're using. You may just have to refer back to the user manual a little bit as the labels on the keys and the processes may be slightly different. For example, on the Hewlett Packard 10B, the interest per year key is labeled as I slash YR, but on the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus, it's labeled as I slash Y. To understand how a financial math calculator works, let me ask you a sports-related question. If a player scores 10 points per quarter, and he plays four quarters, how many points does he score in total? Well, 40, right? But how do we figure that out? Well, when it comes to math, if you know all but one variable, you can always determine the unknown variable. In this case, we know how many points were scored each quarter, and we know how many quarters there are in a game, so we can determine the total points scored. The financial math calculator works exactly the same way. The first thing we're going to do is adjust the settings on the calculator. By settings, I'm referring to things like how many payments will be made each year. Now, most questions will involve one payment per year, not monthly or semi-annual payments, so we're going to set our calculator accordingly. Of course, for more challenging questions, you may have to change it. To set the calculator at one payment per year, we do the following. Press the one key, then press the second function key. On the HP 10B, this is a colored key that corresponds to the color of the secondary functions on the other buttons. On my version, it's the orange key. And as you can see, the corresponding second functions are also orange. Then press the P slash YR button, and that's it. Now, one of the things I love about the HP 10B is it's easy to check your settings, and the same process also clears the calculator, which is wise to do every time you start a fresh question. So let's confirm it's set at one payment per year. Press the second function key, then press the see all key, which stands for clear all and clears any numbers that have been inputted before. Your calculator should say 1P underscore YR. If it does, perfect. If not, rewind the video and rewatch this last part again. 
Now let's get familiar with the buttons you'll use most when doing financial math calculations. Fortunately, they're all presented in a single row near the top of the calculator, so they're easy to find. They are N, which stands for number of periods, I slash YR, which stands for interest per year, but is also a proxy for return in general, PV, which stands for present value, PMT, which stands for payment, and FV, which stands for future value. Now that we have that covered, let's get back to the question. Troy is investing $100,000 today. Assuming a 5% annual after-tax return, how much would he have in 30 years? Well, many students get off on the wrong foot because they just start pounding numbers into their calculator without taking a moment to think through what they're doing. We recommend a different approach. Get in the habit of writing out the financial math variables first. Take your time here. This is where errors tend to occur. Now, I always create a little template by jotting down these five potential variables, but the good news is you don't have to memorize them. They're right there in front of you in a single row on your calculator. Again, they are N, IYR, PV, PMT, and FV. In this question, N is 30 for 30 years, IYR is 5, that's the interest rate, PV is 100,000, that's the amount being invested today, PMT is zero since there are no annual contributions or withdrawals, and FV is the variable we're trying to solve for. Now that the variables have been carefully written out, grab your calculator. We start by confirming that the settings are correct and clear the calculator as we discussed before. Press the second function button, then press the see all key, and your calculator should read 1P underscore YR. Perfect. Now we enter 30N, 5IYR, 100,000, the plus minus key, more on that in a moment, then PV, zero, PMT, and finally FV because that's what we want to calculate. If you've done this right, your calculator should say $432,194.24. Now, you may be wondering, why did we use the plus minus key? Well, keep in mind, in this scenario, Troy is taking $100,000 out of his pocket to invest today, resulting in him being able to put roughly $432,000 in his pocket 30 years from now. Because one's going out and the other's going in, the calculator needs to know which is which. In other words, which is a cash inflow and which is a cash outflow. Otherwise, the calculator is going to get confused and it may give you either a wrong answer or no solution. So the button you use to indicate a cash outflow is the plus minus key. You don't need to use this button if it's a cash inflow, only when it's an outflow. Now, a present value entry will almost always be an outflow, which means that virtually any question you'll encounter will require you to use the plus minus key for PV entries. That wasn't too bad, right? Okay, in the next video, we'll tackle another.